new director, uh, Peter Satsky's exciting Taste the Blood of Dracula, uh, 1969, uh, which reinterpreted the Dracula myth by concentrating on the story's relationship to Victorian society. Hammer went back to Bram Stoker's novel and its mid-European setting for fresh inspiration with The Scars of Dracula, 1970. Uh, Hammer also decided to increase the movie's box office appeal by inserting extra nudity uh, as well as sadistic violence. Uh, for example, uh, such as Count Dracula Lee stabbing his mistress, Anashka Hempel, and whipping his crippled servant, Patrick Thoughton. Uh, the plot uh, of the movie has a disagreeable youth, played by Christopher Ma uh, Matthews, blunder into ca uh, Castle Dracula, uh, this allows some of the scenes of Jonathan Harker's arrival and first night uh, from the Bram Stoker novel to be replayed before Matthews is killed. Now, the youth's lover, uh, Matthews' lover, uh, Jenny Hartley, uh, his brother, Dennis Waterman, and the local priest, Michael Gwynn, soon follow the dead Matthews to Count Dracula's castle. Uh, the priest is then, is then gruesomely killed by bats. Uh, and, uh, well, Waterman fights Dracula over possession of the only woman, Hanley, on the battlements of the castle. Uh, essentially, Dracula begins to kill them off one by one until only the young man stands as a barrier uh, to the woman. Uh, the woman is, of course, the real object of Dracula's quest and the object of Dracula's desire. In Scars of Dracula, the Count encounters a more transcendental force than himself, the force of nature. In the beginning of the film, uh, Christopher Lee Dracula is awakened by a bolt of lightning that strikes his coffin. And in the climax of the movie, uh, the Count is killed by a similar bolt of lightning that strikes a metal spike, uh, which Dracula intends to use on the only surviving male. Uh, Dracula then falls engulfed in flames from the castle's torrent. Uh, the result is a good but uneven mixture of interesting scenes, uh, such as the shot of Dracula crawling lizard-like down the walls of his castle, and, and uh, exploitative sequences betraying utter contempt for the audiences that Hammer catered for. Uh, Roy Ward Baker's direction is sometimes rather heavy-handed. Uh, the musical score is too emphatic. Uh, and the acting, except for Lee's customary professionalism, uh, is, well, sometimes rather hammy, uh, more so than intense. Uh, up until the late 1960s, Hammer Films had carefully avoided releasing Dracula, Christopher Lee movies, in rapid succession. Uh, but the pressure... Uh, to make money faster, eventually leads to the series being speeded up. Uh, thus, Hammer began to produce a new Dracula film uh, almost every year, in addition to numerous other vampire movies, and the Christopher Lee Dracula Hammer series would become increasingly desperate to rekindle uh, the box office appeal of the series, uh, but to no avail. Uh, and by 1973, the Hammer series of seven Christopher Lee Count Dracula movies comes to an unglorious end. Now, Hammer's most intense attention to vampirism comes between the years 1970 and 1972, when the company produced six vampire films. Hammer uh, is at this point in competition uh, with a series of sub-surrealist erotic vampire films. Uh, plus, the company's building their own drift towards sexier notions of vampirism. So they embarked on a feature adaptation of Sheridan Le Fanu's classic novella, Carmilla. Uh, this is known as The Vampire Lovers. All right into it. Now, on the heels of the success of Hammer's Vampire Lovers, 1970, a Lust for a Vampire, 1971, and Vampire Circus, 1972. All three of these films made a lot of money. Uh, the film company exploited uh, 
the Dracula theme once again. Uh, for the most part, Hammer was fairly inventive in their attempts to rework mythical material, uh, as in Twins of Evil, 1971, and Blood from the Mummy's Tomb, also 1971. But with this film, Dracula, A.D., 1972, also known as Dracula Chelsea, uh, 72, uh, Dracula Chase, The Mini Girls, and uh, Dracula Today, directed by Alan Gibson. Hammer followed a particularly post-60s dead end by resurrecting Count Dracula in the trendy context of a so-called youth movie set in fashionable swinging London. Uh, Peter Cushing bravely continues his deadpan interpretation of Van Helsing, this time playing his own descendant, uh, Van Helsing III. Uh, the original Van Helsing is supposed to be the character's uh, grandfather, I believe, with the result that Cushing's performance uh, sits in a type of vacuum. Uh, he's a man out of time in this movie, uh, a fish out of water in a way. Uh, Cushing was still in recovery from the death of his beloved wife, uh, at the time, uh, and begins to look uh, very aged and frail. Uh, and the script had to be rewritten uh, due, his phys uh, due to his physical deterioration. Now, Christopher Lee, as Count Dracula, is almost totally reduced to the vampiric act ex uh, itself. Uh, he's not in the movie all that much. And the less than inspired direction... Uh, is happy uh, with uh, getting from one scene to the next without fuss or inspiration. Uh, and the movie lapses into uh, camping up the script with silly lines like, uh, she's a bit drained, uh, don't you think? Now, Dracula AD 1972 attempts to bring Count Dracula into a contemporary setting, but does not deal with the role the Count might assume in a complex modern society. Rather, it moves its Victorian plot and Dracula among a group of hippies, and Count Dracula constantly encounters hostile, unfamiliar structures uh, that leave him somewhat ineffective in the present day. Uh, so Lee, uh, the Count, simply vampirizes several of the youngsters, the hippies, in order to use them as his instruments of evil. Uh, but to little effect. Now, Dracula's next ha Hammer-sponsored outing, The Satanic Rites of Dracula, 1973, a marginally more interesting film, will sadly bring Hammer's famous Christopher Lee Dracula series to, uh, well, an un uh, unglorious end, uh, something I will get into a little bit later in the program. Uh, all right, let's move on to The Creeping Flesh the team responsible for the rather unfortunate Dracula A.D. 1972. Well, this team tries and manages to fail yet again uh, in the silly satanic rites of Dracula 1973, also known as Count Dracula and his vampire bride, also known as Dracula is dead uh, and uh, well and living in London. Uh, this is directed by Alan Gibson. Now, in the movie... Count Dracula, Christopher Lee, is a Howard Hughes-type reclusive tycoon figure living in the penthouse of a huge high-rise office complex uh, and until Van Helsing, Peter Cushing, tracks him down. Uh, the central flux or gimmick of the film is that Dracula is about to spread a deadly plague throughout the world by means of a bacteriological strain uh, developed by Dr. Kirby, played by Freddie Francis. Uh, the dismal plot also involves the kidnapping of Cushing's daughter, uh, played by Joanna Lumley, uh, a Dracula country house with James Bond-like security systems, uh, and the climactic burning of the place, while various pillars of society who have been enslaved by the Count perish after exposure to the lethal disease. Uh, with this film... Christopher Lee said farewell to Hammer's Dracula series while Peter Cushing reprised Van Helsing uh, in the rather bizarre but entertaining The Legend of the Seven Gold, uh, Golden Vampires, 1974, which I'll get into in a little while. 
Uh, now, the problem with satanic rights is the notion that savage capitalism, uh, property developers, uh, business moguls, uh, and financial tycoons are bloodsuckers. Uh, well, this notion is just too shallow a metaphor to sustain the complexity of the vampire mythos. Uh, now, the aging Van Helsing, Peter Cushing, in the movie is a consultant to Scotland Yard on a black magic group that has come to Scotland Yard's attention. Uh, his investigation leads him to Dracula, uh, who has emerged as a real estate mogul and is surrounded by a group of corrupt businessmen. Uh, Dracula, Christopher Lee, escapes Van Helsing's first attack uh, via a silver bullet. Uh, but this movie is noteworthy only in the fact that it revives an old folk remedy for destroying vampires. Uh, in the film Count Dracula, Christopher Lee is led into a hawthorn bush uh, and is trapped inside it. Hawthorn, uh, a small uh, but hardwood tree in the Rose family, uh, was used as both a symbol of hope and as a charm against witchcraft, sorcery, and vampires. Uh, a barrier of hawthorn uh, was often placed around the house uh, or placed uh, on windows and or doorways. Hawthorn is thought to be uh, sacred. It's thought to have a sacred quality uh, since Christ's crown of thorns uh, is said to have been made from it. All right, let's move on to From Beyond the Grave, 1973. Uh, this is also known as The Undead. Uh, it's also known as The Creatures uh, and Tales from Beyond the Grave. Uh, this is for...